Now we're all set. Sorry for keeping you all wait. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Maayong Udto. Good afternoon, fellow Cebuanos. And to all other people that are watching currently in our live stream, I we welcome you to CEA's or Cebu Esports Arena's first ever major tournament in Call of Duty Mobile, where different teams, different invited teams from different cities battle it out in our bracket right now. And I am with Wasabi and me as Mel as your casters for this tournament. Hello, Wasabi. Well, I am very, very excited for today. We're actually going to be seeing a total of four matches for today. First is going to be Argao versus Talisay battling in HP Arsenal. Next will be Mandawa and versus Lapu Lapu in Summit. Minglanilia and Barili in Summit as well. And lastly, we are going to see Lilaan versus Cebu City in Takeoff. Yeah, since this is the best of one, we'll try our hard to shoutcast this tournament and have the lower bracket and upper bracket give our best. Yep, and we are about to transition into the game, but I want to ask you, Mel, who do you think is going to win our first match? Is it going to be Argao or Talisa? What's your predictions? Well, my predictions are since these two teams right now, they're playing scrims for night to night, and actually they already played, I watched them play their scrims. I'm pretty sure there are some possibilities from for Talisa team to win, but we never know. The underdogs from Argao, the underdogs from the West, would win this match, Wasabi. I am definitely looking forward to it, and since you are voting for Talisa, I will be the devil's advocate here, and I am gonna go and vote for Argao. Hopefully, you know, they're able to pull through despite you mentioning that they are the underdogs of this tournament. And because we are still waiting for the match, I want to invite everyone to follow Cebu Esports Arena, share the stream, and like the page as well, because we have a lot of actions coming in the next couple of weeks where we're going to have the rest of this tournament happening. Very well indeed. Let's see how our bets go with this. Since Arsenal is the first map of this game, the hard point, it's very valid and very complex. Like you can go with uh, different angles from this map. Right now, they're about to start getting ready for their, yeah. 10 seconds before the start of the game, I said. Yep, so this map Arsenal is actually pretty new, so not a lot of people know it, or maybe some of you are may have never even seen it. But now we are actually going to be seeing it in this tournament, and our players, I'm not sure if they've had much practice playing this or not, but one thing is for sure, because it is a new map, we are gonna have a lot of interesting hiding spots from these players and a lot of interesting angles that each of these players are gonna use. Right now, the first game is starting, and it looks like the players on the blue side are going to be the first ones into the point. Yeah, the event right there is a par position as they take out Bueno, takes out one with a piece mate, piece keeper. With that open point right there, they're giving advantage to place like an angle different from the top upper hand. This, look, look at the vent right now, Wasabi. They're trying to make aims for that. Yep, and wow. right now we can see that the yellow team is going to be the one taking control of the point, getting 11 points right now, but it's still very early into the game. So now it's back and forth between the two teams, and it's pretty close so far. Yeah, they're so close in points right now. Dambo takes a joker with his friend. Next. They're both using not, not CBR, but they're using the meta, not the meta guns, PP19, Fennec, CBR. Peacekeeper is actually a good meta gun game in this point. Now they're at the upper hand as another hard point opens up. That one giving them an advantage to pick on some players, eliminating them from the lower ground. So Sabi, look at that. Look at the plays coming in from Sky, going with the flank. Watching out for your trophies, throwing them around with a 100 killer drone from Dumbo. Sky takes on Kens, but he gets taken. The Empress takes her down with the PP19. Wow, good hold there by the Talisai team right now as they gain points, accumulate points for this round. Wow. Yep, right now we can see a couple of the players on the side of the Yell team with Sky and actually Empress here. You know, these are some of the known players of our community and we've seen them play a lot in tournaments and right now they're really proving themselves here for their, their city, trying to be able to win this match and actually gain more points over the players of Argao. And it looks like... It looks like they're doing pretty well so far. Yep, Argo always failed to break, do break attempts at this point. Now another hard point opens up. I think this is the close one. This is the close point hard point right here. 
hoping they would take this as a turn away point that the situation would get better for them. There's yep, a team and goes here. in. Yeah. Yep, and the team are, is going in just as you are saying, and it looks like, oh, what a big pressure missile there. Wow. Gang actually a double kill and and cleaning off the area 80 points to the side of Talisa Esports. Now the team Talisa is leading up to this point right now. It's actually an open hard point, but but uh, you can actually retake that from that vent right there. You see that right side vent? Yeah, you can actually retake, but they're going through the same way again, which they will be spawn trapped. They are failing to do break attempts, failing to do snowballs. And that point, I think Talisa is going to lead this one with a big lead, Kusabi. Wow, yep, nice right. that one. Yep, he's gonna be able to get that kill there, and now we are going to see Empress with the uh, with the Sparrow right now, getting a couple kills here, and Empress holding down this place, trying to get more points, 120 points to their side. The players of Argao is definitely struggling as they still have 9 points here, Mel, and it looks like they are having a very difficult time breaking into points that the players of Talisa e Esports is able to get into really, really quickly. The West, the Argo needs to to get a new strategy in maintaining their hard point. Their gunfights are actually losing at this point. Now Vortex takes out Sky from that. That black yep. hole. Now all this OST from this point right here is a close one. It's a, it's a close point. Yeah, this is a close point we're having right now. I know it's actually not. It's, yeah, Joker takes out two. Takes out Empress. Takes out the move. They kill. Beautiful kill by Empress. The queen of this point. Beautiful kill another by Myrtle with a Sparrow. In, Initiating gunfights from that, exchanging gunfights. Wow. Yep, and right now, I'm going to be specting Dambo here from the side of the Lisa Esports. Unfortunately, there's going to be a little bit of a technical difficulty, but it's going to go right back into the game. 150 points to the side of the Lisa Esports, and they are continuing to hold down the point. Gang, that's crap time while the play. Argao Esports start moving into the next point. If they're able to get this point early on in the game, they might be able to actually earn more points here. But the question is, are they going to be able to hold it down? Because the players of Talisa Esports have been so consistent into breaking into points, while Argao has been struggling to win their gunfights and overall hold down points just as they are struggling right now. Dambo pulling out the war machine, just clearing off the whole wow. area and gaining the point back which allows them to continue earning points, widening that gap between them and Argao. Now Empress takes out this Pharaoh, takes out two from that one. Now this is a very pretty bad dis disadvantage for Argao and pressure the Talisa team as they go through the another close point. Sky tries to take down one, a king from the point would never bow down to these guys. Look at that, Alberto, I don't know what gun is using, but Dumbo with the Fennec goes at Alberto again. Gunfights, but gunfights, trade for trades at the 2 for one trade. Now they're closing in at a 200 point score mark. A big score yep. difference right there, Wasabi. I don't know why, what's happening with Argao right now. They need to go with their momentum and spike up their strategies again. You're absolutely right there. I have no idea what's happening with them as well. Maybe it's just a lack of strategy. Maybe a struggle with the gunfights. But overall, I think you're pretty right when you said earlier that the players of Talisa Esports have actually a huge advantage and a very good chance of winning this game right now it seems to be one of the last couple of hard points as we hit that 200 point mark for the side of the lisa esports and unfortunately argao still 40 points and they continue to lose their gunfights here beautifully holding that point impressed going in not just king but as a queen in this point right now Beautiful, beautiful takedown. Now they're at the vent. They're trying to get the vent, the power point position, but now they failed to reconstruct their uh, movements again. Failing gunfights by gunfights. I don't know what play are they doing right now, but they're close to winning. I think it's your final take of the win, Wasabi. Yep, this looks like it's going to be almost the end as soon as the next hard point opens it looks like the players of Talisa esports is going to look to go in for that early move because they know they're going to be able to close down the game as soon as the next one opens five more points needed on their side to end the game here bell and it is so close three more seconds till the point opens up the players of e Talisa esports still holding down the area not giving any room for argao esports to go close and there you have it's the end of the first game, and Talisa just dominates it. 
Alisa advances to the another bracket while Argal goes down to the lower bracket. Since it's the best of one series, it will be a fast-paced game for Hardpoint right now, guys. Now, next match, I think. But uh, let's let's see how hard it takes on the on, on the last game. What were their what what wrongs were they doing, Argao? I think they were losing on gunfights, merely positionings, or merely um, coaching of maps. Doesn't look as good as they do. So yeah, I think Talisa would worthly take that win right there, Sabi. Yep, you're absolutely right. I mean, we just saw the kill feed most of the time and a couple kills going around, but you could really tell that Argao was having a hard time winning their gunfights. I it I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it's just a lack of an exper of experience on their side, or maybe it could also be um the unsure of the meta i saw a couple of them using different guns like bison and m4 mm. which are not really the current meta now um which obviously you want to be using the good guns unless you have some sort of strategy that we don't really know but again at the end of the day it's going to be talisa who is able to win that last match yeah talisa devouring arga with that one leading them just like virginia foods as our sponsors for today, uh, for, for this tournament, we have our yep. Bioagronica, Mooning, Omega Multiplant Vitamins, and Dos Amigos. Now, yep. this we see them on the lower bracket in which we will be waiting for them, for an, another team to go down to the lower bracket with them. So what's our next match again, Wasabi? Yep, our we Mandawe versus Lapu Lapu, and it's going wow. to be in hard point. Hardpoint Summit. But before we see that, Mel, we're actually going to be going for a short break. So before that, do you have anything you want to say before we leave? I would say I would like to take a snack right now and drink some water because my throat's so dry. <laughs> so yeah, that was a pretty fun, uh, no, entertaining Hardpoint game for them. So let's take a break.
go. I don't have to go. And we are back now. We are going to finally see the match between Mandawa and Lapu Lapu Esports. Once again, I am your caster, Wasabi Gaming, and with me is Mel. And we are going to be your casters for today. And we are just about to head into our second match for today. Earlier, we saw Argao versus, versus Talisai. And it was a pretty one-sided match, wasn't it, Mel? Yeah. So waiting for them to complete. Um, and that we have some pretty good players, you know, Wasabi. I know their players, and as well as Lapu Lapu. Even though I'm betting for Lapu Lapu, I'm almost betting for Mandawi. They got those pro player seed kind of players, you know, they got LBA holders and anything like that. But now I'll place my bets on Lapu Lapu. And yeah, waiting for them to work on with their, their lobby now. Honestly, I have to say, I know some of the people in Mandawa's team, so I definitely will be rooting for them, my friends, and I hope they're able to pull this one off. And, well, let's see what happens if it's going to be one-sided match again, or will this be more of an even match? Or, I don't know, exactly, maybe Lapu Lapu is going to pull off something here that we didn't expect. Hopefully, we we'll do so, because look at Mandawa's lineup right now. We got Magista, Jalo. Aya and Jarbs and Hatred. And in terms of Lapu Lapu, we got Astro, Sushi, Oods. Ooh, I see him get back in the game now. And Kinesu and as well as Cole. Well, actually, Man you know, Mandawi's players, they've actually got into big stages now. No on. Two of them are X Pro, Magista's uh, record LB hold uh, holder, for it's much like 200 points. I don't know what season was that, but I think this guy's buffed up his game sense and rank game stats. Well, let's not, not yep. forget about Lapu Lapu. They both play their uh, fair fight in scrims. They both uh, play scrims every night too, between other teams and T1 teams also. So I might think this actually may be a fair fight or, or a even fight. I'll play my best on Lapu Lapu, is that I definitely hope it's an even and fair fight. I hope we get a little bit more action because honestly, a while ago it was really, really one-sided and the game was so, so fast. So hopefully this one is a little slower and maybe we see more action from both of these teams where we're going to be able to give highlights to each of the players here. Yep, and before we start our game, let's not forget about our sponsors for this tournament. We have Virginia Foods Incorporated, Bio Agronica, that's for your fertilizers are, and mooning, and as well as Omega Multi-Plant Vitamins and Dos Amigos. Now we're still waiting for them to be ready. Now let's talk about how these players work up their way through this um, uh, kind of place. I've seen them in scrims. I've seen them play better in scrims though. They played with like, like Kanina, I said now, they're playing with T1 teams, top one pair teams, international, and hoping for a bet that could do well in this playing even fair and balanced game, not just them deliberate in the game. Yep, so hopefully we do see that, uh, Mel, just as you were saying, these teams, they've been practicing a lot, not only with other people in the community, but also with top tier teams. And actually, I think that is because Magista used to be a pro player and he made it to the big stages, the lives of the official tournaments of Garena. And well, that definitely proves how good of a player he is. So hopefully, um, the players of Lapu Lapu is able to keep up. Hopefully we do so, because we also got Lapu Lapu City with Uds as an old Hyrant member. Kinesu, an old record LB holder too, waiting for them to get ready at this point now. As we have Summit as our first hard point of level. But okay, first uh, one one game from a hard point. So summit as their map, a close range map. Hopefully we'd see shotguns in this close range SMGs like Fanex and CBR. Now hoping we'd see them. Definitely, definitely. I mean, as you said, Summit is a very close range map. So there's going to be a lot of shotguns and SMGs at play. And well, obviously our meta right now is SMG, so I'm sure those are going to be seen as well, especially the CBR, um, a couple, maybe even the Switchblade and a couple other guns. But right now we are just about to head to the match as the game starts and our players are off towards the first point of Summit. And they're all they're already gun fighting the upper side, the left side there, and also as well as control to anchor that spot. 
seeing them with their aggressive plays right now. Hatred going on as an OBG player taking out some players right there from the shadow from the cage. Takes out two, takes out one. He gets taken down eventually by his own bomb. He's trying to contest the upper the two F1. Now Jarps going into the cage gameplay towards the desktop of now going in. Jello tries to spot another one in the cage right there. Now hopefully we see an even play right here, Wasabi. Yep, hopefully, hopefully, but so far it looks like the players of Mandawa is just laying out their opponents right now. You can see the kill feed is all blue, but right now the players of Lapu Lapu trying to go in for the contest. They're trying to get that point from the clutches of Mandawa, but unfortunately with five seconds left on the clock, I think it would be a better option for them to go into the next point that is about to open over there in the balcony area. And it looks like the players of Mandawa are going to be the ones with the early rotation setting up their and taking the first couple of points. That another hard point opens up. Someone steps on a harbor but eventually gets killed. And then the upper hand right now, we got the blue team, the Mandawi team, taking over that greenhouse as their advantage spawn. Jarps going on with a shotgun place at the top side. Magista, oh, they're all using shotgun. Ayan, I think, is using Fennec. Sushi CBR going underneath a shadow place right now. They're, no, they're not getting good with finish place. They're getting taken down between their gunfights. They're not using their spawn, someone spawning at the main door, hoping that would take a break for them, a break attempt, and a snowball would be a good, good thing for them to retake that, that play right there. Yep, and right now we can see the players of Mandawa continuing to hold the top spot here as they hit 55 points already. But the scrap time is going to go to the side of Lapu Lapu Esports as we rotate oh. into the third hardpoint hill right now. And this hill, this is one of the most uh, important hills. This is the money hill of Summit. But the most important thing to know in this hill is that you have to be able to control the spawns. And it looks like the players of Lapu Lapu are going to be the ones who are able to control those spawns. And here you can see that they're making their break into the point, keeping the players of Mandawe outside. And it looks like they're going to be successful on that break. Beautiful hold the spawns, straining in with first stacked up in that hard point right now. Jarb going with the two kills, Jarb three kills. Now Kuds going in outside that play right there at the point. There's no one stepping at the point at the moment, but look at the anchor spot. Yellow, yeah, the Lapu Lapu team is still at the anchor side, giving them a good advantage to spawn. But but they're not going to zone out of this because uh, Mandawe gets a good control of the spawn. But, I mean, good control of the point. Look at that. Hatred going with the OBG kills. As he lays down his hunter killer, hoping he gets another kill with that. With 10 seconds time to spare, they need to move on, advance, ad, advance to the next point. Yep, they definitely have to start moving into the next point, advancing there. Because if they're able to get this second money hill here, then they're going to be able to put themselves on top even more but right now it's going to be a difficult one as the players of lapu lapu are there first magista pulling out the sparrow here getting a double kill right off the bat and clearing off the area for the rest of his team to play objective and now you can see in the mini map they're going to be able to maintain the spawn here and take over in comparison to to lapu lapu esports who got the early rotation but was not able to hold it down and now you can see mandawa is definitely slaying taking all of the points points here to their side hitting that hundred point already absolutely as i said absolute defense coming in from mandawi towards that hill right there now they're all going to not going to do pinch plays as strategized with lapu lapu city it's not going well for them the score point difference is so big was you look at that kill after kill they're not taking it up into the gunfights now gets taken down look at the hundred killer drones all lined up their score streaks a very disadvantage at this round of the point. Now another hard point ups and up. This open hard point is going to be pretty hard for them, but they, they got a chance to contest it between the 2F, the shadows, the cage, the control room, and they were with that as long as they do not get spawn trapped with them. Yep, definitely. And here you can see Jarps actually pulling out the claw. He's going to be able to get two hey. there. Make that three that clears off the area for the side of Mandawa as they take this point. About to hit the 150 point mark. Now, this is the only and la one of the last opportunities for Lapu Lapu City to make a contest. If they want to be able to have a chance of winning this game, they have to start making a move now, making the changes now. Because if they wait any longer, it's going to be all too late. 
late for it to go through. Right now, you can see Kanesu trying to block off the area here, watching a couple of the entrances as the rest of his team takes the point from the clutches of Mandawa. They're going to be able to get the scrap time on that first hill as we rotate into the next one. Look at the kill stats of Mandawa right now. Wasabi, we are to the 20 digit mark point. And they're controlling 2F1 as another hard points opens up. Hopefully they could get to the green spawn. Because that one that spawn right there is their advantage. Now they're trying to contest, they're trying to pinch play in each and every corners of that. Magista going on plays with the oh, vortex kill by Cold. Two plays from Cold Astro kills Ion. They actually turned their tables on that point right there. Magista going to the sparrow plays another kill for Magista. Controlling on again the 2F. Hoping they would get a good defense from there, but now Mandawe is trying to... No chance for Lapu Lapu to get that point right there. Definitely going to be difficult for them and well, maybe they're able to make some changes, maybe not. But right now, we are about to see the players of Mandawa City hit that 200 point mark. And with the next hill being a money hill of the map, the players of Lapu Lapu really have to step up their game and get that early spawn. I know a while ago they were able to pull it off for a couple of seconds, that's what brought them up to 60 points. But at the end of it, they gave it back to the side of Mandawa and they lost the next couple of hills. So now, this one is where they have to change up their place. Lapu Lapu has to go in there early, get the hill, and actually hold it down if they want to stop Mandawa from winning this match as we go into that 200 point mark. And now, you can see that it's going to be a fight for the spawns, a bit back and forth, but Lapu Lapu is going to be the one taking the spawn. Now they need to survive this last hard point because that one is 50 seconds. If they try to hold down that point right there, it's gonna be their win. And that was gonna take his win. But now Lapu Lapu takes sides right now. As Pons is getting controlled, Kineso takes out his sparrow, hoping to get a person right there from the main door. Watching how they play, they're trying to look at every angle. Ayan just waiting for an opportunity to kill someone, waiting for teammates to get an info. They're trying to get the spawn point right now. Now Magista. Gets taken, Sushi gets like, takes down Jalom, Ayan takes down Kanesu, they're both playing Sparrow plays right now. Jarps going to shotgun plays, A Jarps takes on two, takes the hard point right there. Now, in this hard point right now, they need to advance the next hard point or else it will be a lose for them. Well, with 8 seconds left, they're gonna try to get the scrap time in that and then push for the next one. But, you know, I think they're not that they're not in a huge disadvantage here because as you can see, even the players of Lapu Lapu are not in the next hill just yet. That gives Mandawa a little time, a little leeway here to make their play. And it looks like they're gonna be able to set up in the entrances of the hill. But Lapu Lapu already inside, they're gonna have a hard time maintaining the spawn as they get swarmed by the players of Mandawa trying to push into the hill right now and from the looks of it Lapu Lapu is gonna survive that first push from Mandawa. You have plenty of time to work for time to make some good plays they're trying to protect that hard point hopefully that spawn will never get to Mandawa now Mandawa takes out that spawn the hill point right now hoping they would get win all these gunfights or else Lapu Lapu City were able to lose this game with the vortex coming in for Cole takes out one takes out two Jello going in right now. They're almost at a 30 points score mark. Look at their kill, kill stats, Wasabi. Definitely so many kills on all of the players on the side of Mandawa, but also the players on Lapu Lapu. I think they're just struggling a little bit more when it comes to the objective plays. And I think now, as they hit into like a better momentum, they might just be able to catch up, but five points left needed on the side of Mandawa. The next hill is about to open up. Jarb's here with a shotgun just being a very very uh, a very good slayer here for his team he's gonna clear up the area and as the hill opens up the players of mandawa just need five more points to end the game here and it looks like they're trying to prolong the game a little longer they don't want it to end just yet yeah. look at the play from right there i think they're accumulating kills from that one they're not setting on the point they're just wanting more and more and more kills as hatred works out his vortex right there from the main door there's not a chance for Lapu Lapu to win this game. I don't know why what's happening with Mandai right now. But look at those kills, Wasabi. That's unbelievable for a pro player like them. Hopefully, if they take miracles from Lapu Lapu, they would win this game, change up their strategies, and improvise. They should develop a win for this game. Barrel play the Magista takes out one. Well, it definitely looks like they are prolonging this game. Maybe, maybe someone is trying to streak up for a... Uh, 
a new kill here but we'll uh, really not know until we see it happen but right now the second hill is once ab again about to open up and the players of Lapu Lapu is gonna take that as Mandawan continues to play for kills not looking to end the game just yet yeah I am still controlling the 2F right now they're not trying to end it they're making to prolong the game I thought this would be a fast paced game but look at that Lapu Lapu hopefully they would tie the score but now I think it's impossible because look Look at how their score streaks are aligned right now, Wasabi. They're all having score streaks. Yep, they are all pulling off those investments into their score streaks. But even with the players of Mandawa investing into score streaks, they still choose not to go into that point. And you can see Majista actually getting a quad kill there. The rest of the team also slaying a lot. And Jarps here popping off with the shotgun once again, streaking up to be able to clear off the area. But even when the area is clear, they don't go in for the end just yet. They are looking to get this for the long game and rack up as many kills as possible. Look, can you see the kills right now? On the side of Mandawa, almost every single player hitting the 40 kill point mark, while on the side of Lapu Lapu, they're still at about 20s. They're mostly winning most of the gunfights right now. They're not stepping on the point as you can see clearly right here. Vortex plays coming in. Now Kaneso warming up his anchor spot. He's not an anchor, he's supposed to be a slayer. Supposed to go through that point, but now when Dawi team not trying to go through that point, they're gonna go through sides, flanking side by side, giving the El Lapu Lapu City an advantage. Wow, that's a pretty good game. I mean, I, 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 you know, Mandawa is playing it pretty risky here. They're letting yeah. their opponent get so close to catching up to them. I mean, one wrong mistake, the players of Lapu Lapu might just be able to turn this around, but again. This is all under the control of Mandawa. They just need one more point. They're playing it very, very risky. Trying to get the kills here. And six seconds left in the clock. They still continue to stay away from that hill. Oh no, this is not pretty crucial risk. But they're at one point score difference from winning this round. And advancing to the upper bracket. Well, Lapu Lapu will go down to Argao. But let's not see how the bet goes there. Look at that. Even though they're not pushing through that point, they're winning most of the gunfights. Are you, are you seeing it, Wasabi? Yep, hey. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, you know these players, there are a, lot, a lot of them are pro players or known players in the community. And well, with how well they've played in, in other tournaments, I wouldn't expect any less from these players. And right now, the players of Lapu Lapu continue to earn more points as the players of Mandawa continue to torment them here. And they finally end the game! 250 to 180 points in favor of, Lap of Mandawa Esports. They're not contesting for the point, they're actually contesting for the kills right there. So much kills for that point. Wow. Daminun, 30 kills for most of the Mandawi team. Well, actually they reached a 30 point skill mark. Look at how Lapu Lapu stats right now. They're both under 30. Well, Kaneso's about like 30 kills as seeing him play right now. So yeah, yep. I think Mandawi will go up the upper bracket and Lapu Lapu will go below. But who knows what strategy they're making. But Mandawi, it's a worthy fight for them to see them rank up their skills like that. Yep, Mandawa is definitely a team to watch out for. I mean, their place was just so strong. If they wanted to, they could have ended this game really, really quickly. But, well, they wanted to play the long game. But anyway... We are going to be ending the second match now. And, well, in a couple of minutes, we're going to be seeing the third match, which is going to be Minglanilia versus Barili. And that match will also be happening in Summit. But before that, we are going to take a short break. So we end the break. We have uh, sponsors for this tournament. Virginia Foods Incorporated, Bio Agronica, Mooning, Omega Multiplant Vitamins, and Dos Amigos. Thank you, and we'll see you again to the next match. Peace out.
Okay. Hello, and we're back again. I'm sorry for that lengthy delay, guys. So much happening right here, but that's okay. We still have our third match for tonight in this evening time right now. And we have Barili versus Minglanilia. Again, the South versus the West. I don't know much about these teams, but I know for sure these teams have scrimmed with each other now. Now, what are your takes on this, Wasabi? And by the way, good evening. Well, I'm evening. also not quite sure about these two teams, but once again, oh, for sure, we are going to see a lot of action happening here as we head into Summit, a very, very small hardpoint map where a lot of your, a lot of your uh, guns and weapons and uh, investments are very important to be able to maximize them, to use them to your advantage, and to be able to help out the rest of your teams. And well, as you said a while ago, because we are going into small map, we're going to see a lot of shotguns and SMGs. Yeah, short range guns are a must at this point. Now, it's the same map since the la uh, the last match, second match between the Mandawa and Lapu Lapu City. And we're trying to see how these players bro break it down in this third match of them. Now, you're both getting ready at some point, waiting for them to be prepared now. So, yeah, let's see how this goes, Wasabi. Yep, definitely. I mean, you're really right there. This map is so small, so it, there's a lot of important aspects in this. And not only that, but also Summit, you know, this map has many money hills that you want to be able to take advantage of and use your strategies to be able to break into the points. Yep, the two P control and the lower ground control. That's where you're gonna. Con that's where your anchors are gonna be. The Slayers actually at the two P control, and, and it's either the support. We're gonna. It's gonna go down through that cage right there. But now waiting for them to match up. Tell me how about about your evening, Wasabi. Well, I'm doing pretty good, but like I honestly hope this game. Um, you know, the breaks, we've had a lot of long breaks. Maybe hopefully it gets shorter as we go into the fourth game later. But before that, of course, we are going to see this match before between Minglanilia and Banilad. Yeah. Uh, Barili, sorry. Barili. Barili. Yeah, I almost fell asleep, Kanina. So that's fine. We're going to see some exciting plays as this match goes down through this summit. Gunfight with gunfight, exchanging trades. Let's see how this goes, though. Wait, 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 let, me, let me see what, what, what team are you betting on this? Well, I'm not quite sure because I don't really know the players here. But one thing is for sure, we're about to head into the game because the players are finally loading up. And as you can see, we are going into Summit again. And as the timer ticks down, five seconds left and our players are off. Hoping they'd win huge gunfights at this moment. Now they're rushing in full up mid or either they're going to the 2P. Yeah, they're going through the main door. Equalizes everything right there towards the point. There's four players at the side of Barili controlling the, um, the point. Now hopefully Barili goes down with that. The anchor spot takes down. Now going through that shadows, through the cage. Hoping the gun find another person. Now Micro takes down Futaro. Miglanilia overthrows that hard point right there. Yep, and right now you can see that the players here of Manglanilia is going to be the one with the lead, though it is very, very small because it is still the start of a match that is going to set them up for success as long as they're able to maintain the flow and momentum that they currently have and carry it over to the next couple of hard points. They might just be able to pull away with this one. 15 seconds left on this first hill before we move into the next one and it looks like the scrap time is actually going to go to the side of Barili here as the players of Minglanilia starts setting up for the next one. Yep, a momentum is a must for these players. I mean, both teams should get their momentum straight right down right there. But now, seeing that Shadow gets taken down quickly, they should control the 2F control and having those trophies placed. No bomb, no god mates could affect them whatsoever. I think Minglanilia is dominating this point right now. The hill is up close and that Ooh. greenhouse is settled right now with a shotgun from Paolo. Another 2 kill from Paolo. The lame. Delaying Barili right with the Predator missile coming down. Wow, beautiful fight and gunfight exchange from that. But no, but Minglanila always takes that hard point there. 
Yep, but right now, 30 seconds left on the clock, and the players from England Nilia continue to dominate the match here in the second hill. Now, as we do, as we know, Mel, this next hill is one of the biggest money hills of the map, where you it is very vital to be able to control the spawns and go in for the early rotations. Now, it looks like the players of our team Barili is going to be the ones there first and it looks like they're going to try to settle up the spawns but unfortunately they get knocked out of the equation by Minglanilia who takes the spawns right from their clutches and now you can see that Minglanilia is going to be the one holding down the spawns as we see a couple of players here um they'll invest into a annihilator their operator skills is gonna definitely give them a huge advantage here well, Barili needs to step up their game going through that point. Yeah, Barili takes on that point, but whatsoever, they're both rushing through that mid, mid square, through the main door with the 100 killer drone, taking out most of their players, retaking that spawn right there. But no, Barili still takes a spawn, but, but Minglanilia is at the king of the hill, going out with the Sparrow kills, seeing how they play so well with this, controlling that spawn. I know, not controlling, controlling that point, zoning those players out. The defense is good from Barili. I mean, from Ringanilia. Yep, definitely a very good de defense from them. And 17 seconds left in the clock. But unfortunately, for some weird reason, the players of Barili still decide to go in for the push. That's only going to give them their scrap time of on that hill. I think it would have been a better strategy for them to actually advance to the next one, set up there, and get ready for the next hill to open. Because now they lose the opportunity to go in early and actually hold down that hill. Now, the players of Minglanilia is going to have the slight advantage of being there early setting up the area and getting ready for the pushes of Barili, which I'm sure they're going to be able to withstand. And as you can see here, they continue to reach point, uh, they continue to raise the number of points that they have, widening the gap between them and Barili, hitting that 130 point mark already. And with 40 seconds still on this hill, they're going to be really, really close to ending the game if they're able to hold this down long enough. Yeah, Paul Kitty getting in with the shotgun plays here and there he's hit with the, sh with the KRM. Throws in a CBR, but the point still goes to Minglanilia, rotating that point as hard as it can. But now there's shotgun everywhere, Wasabi. Look at those shotgun plays. Takes out one Ooh. day. Now going through that point, zoning them up. No one's stepping the point currently at the moment, but now they're exchanging roles. Opening another hard point, they should position themselves. But really, if they, you want to win this, position yourselves at the anchor spot, which is the control and either the cage one or either the 2F. Yep, that is definitely some of the very important positions and power positions here that you need to be able to hold down if you want to win. But it looks like the players of Minglanilia are just way more dominant than the players of Barili, especially when it comes to the gunfights and the engagements here. And also the rotations. I mean, they're just dominating in every single aspect. And it's really giving the players of Barili a difficult time here. Now, Barili's going to get a couple kills under their belt right now, contesting into the hill. But the question is, what? Will they be able to get that backup to make the break and for right now they're going to be able to get that point on their side make the break and hold it down for a couple of seconds but they have a lot of work to do if they want to catch up to the players from Minglanilia. i mean there's more than 150 point uh, 120 point gap here between them and their opponent and if they don't make any changes now they're gonna lose this match yep hopefully they do step up their game then now but now i talk Micro takes up Hunter with his CBR, protecting that point is another hard point that opens up. They're always, their unique skills, super very sayang kanina, you know? Kasi yung purifier, pinatay lang ng claw, and didn't even use the purifier so well. So ang sayang, he should get gotten close for that. Now next point, Shadow going in two. Two for one in the in the cage right there now. Lollipop takes out Futaro. Open up the hard point, steps up. With an open vortex, hopefully he could use that to Shadow Vault that players sa likod niya in the greenhouse yeah he could spawn trap him with, with his vortex but now number three player can see right now seem to see right now anchoring that but with a fennec now he got bad aims on that a lollipop takes him down bad end from Berlin. you need to win your gunfight or never really and right now you can see the players of minglanilia hitting that 200 point mark 
50 points more to go before they end this match. And now, 20 seconds on the hill. They're gonna give that scrap time to the side of Barili because they are looking to end the game on the next hill that's just about to open. Now, if the players of Minglanilia are able to hold down these pawns, hold down this uh, hill here, they're going to be able to close up the game. But from the looks of it, Barili is also going to be trying really hard not to say goodbye just yet. They are making the break from for that hill. And from the looks of it, they're actually going to be able to take control of the spawn, which is going to give them a huge advantage here. Yep. But Barili is getting at a disadvantage right now as the 200 points for Mark leads by the Minglan Nilia, hoping to zone up their offense on the side of Barili, man. But look at that. There's almost, they're almost close to winning, but Barili is not giving up the fight. They're still contesting the point, but no, the shotgun goes for power. So with the KRM, gets three kills. Beautiful kill there. Takes out one at the mid square P1. Maybe he can get one, but no. 15, 15 more points to go. Wasabi, it's your take on these last points. Yep, wow. and right now you can see 40, 40, 100, 240 points on the side of Minglanilia. Five more points for them to be able to close up the game. And with them holding down the hill, they're going to be wow. able to make a quick game and end it. Hey, they ended it up with a 250 and a 63 point score difference right there. Now, Barili will go down with the others at the lower bracket. And still a best of one series while Minglanilia, the team of the South, proceeds to the next bracket, the upper bracket one. We don't know who's, yep. who's gonna match up next from the upper bracket, but let's see after we after we uh, see the next match in between Cebu versus Liloan. Yeah, beautiful game there, but no, uh, uh, I think really needs to catch up on their gunfights under the game sense, the rotations. And I think yep, we're gonna definitely. continue to our next match. Yep, we are actually just going to take a short break before the next match. Again, it's going to be Liloan versus Cebu City as a final match for today. And it will be happening in takeoff. Yep. And by the way, Wasabi, do you want to... Can I hear your uh, no advertisement? Yep, but before we go, once again, this tournament is brought to you by our sponsors. We have Virginia Foods Incorporated, Bioagronica, Mooning... Omega Multiplant Vitamins and Dos Amigos, and of course, our one and only Cebu Esports Arena. EPA, I think, yeah, Cebu Esports Arena's first ever um, Call of Duty mobile tournament, which uh, it's LAN. Yes, I said it, it's LAN. It's going to be face to face after the finals have been guessed now. Yep, so we are just gonna take a short break for now, and we'll see you guys later. Goodbye.
Welcome to Cebu Esports Invitational's Call of Duty Mobile Division. We are back for our last and final match between Lilo Ann and Cebu City. Once again, I am your caster, Wasabi Gaming, and with me is Mel. And we are going to be your caster for tonight as we head into take to see the action happen. Mayong gabi. Good evening, fellow Cebuanos, and to all other people currently watching the live stream. Now, here we see our last match, and this match is no, mat uh, no other than Cebu versus Liluan, our Sugbo's finest. Seeing them, how, how they play in this uh, battlefield, they should take turns in what to do. So, yeah. Yep, but before we see this upcoming match, which I'm sure everyone is excited to finally see, we have to talk about our sponsors. This tournament is brought to you by Virginia Food Incorporated, Incorporated. Bioagronica, Mooning, Mog. Uh, Omega Multiplant Vitamins and Dos Omegas, and also our one and only Cebu Esports Are Arena, the host of this tournament. Yeah, hopefully you're all having a wonderful dinner right there because seeing this la uh, final match, yeah, you guys should see this final match because it's uh, one of the last match at for, for tonight. So we're waiting for the players to get ready. And what are your takes on this uh, match, Wasabi, between uh, Cebu versus Liluan? Well, I have to be honest, I don't really know the players of both of these teams, but I'm also gonna say I'm a little biased because I myself am from Cebu City, and so I would love to see my uh, the team, the players representing my city win this match. But then again, uh, we don't know the players. Maybe Lilo An's gonna pull something off that we did not expect, and maybe they're gonna maybe prove me wrong. Mm -mm. Well, maybe I'll prove you wrong. I'm, I'll be from Lilo. I'll... I'll bet my sides on Liluan, even though I'm from Cebu. I love Cebu so much, but Liluan, so I'll go for the Liluan. <laughs> so I them. guess it's going to be even. An even match. Hopefully, this will be an even match for them too. Uh, like the other matches, so unbalanced, right? Seeing those hard po uh, points accumulated, there were like Lubong and Isai, very high. So yeah, let's see how this goes well with Cebu and Liluan. Not yet already yep. setting up their lobby smooth now. Wait, have you yep. ate your dinner now, Wasabi? Actually, unfortunately, I have not eaten my dinner yet. That's why I am really, really excited to finally get this done and over with so I can have a delicious dinner. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I haven't cooked my lunch said so yeah. Maybe this will be my lunch after this match right now. So yeah, I'll it'll be exciting to finish casting this, this night and eat. My lunch and my dinner. And then we yep, wait long to the lobby. Yep. Unfortunately, we do not have a room yet, and the players are taking some time to uh, invite the production team into the room so that we can get the match started. But rest assured, our team is working it, working on it right now, trying to get the players in. Yes, hopefully so. But I don't know who who the players of Liluhan and Cebu are. I mean, I know a few players from Cebu. They're actually, uh, yeah, leaderboard holders. Also, they're they're like top uh, two players from Cebu, who's currently leading leaderboards right now in the Garena server. I know one. It's his name is Chong Ata. Yeah, I've seen him play in RG. We played together. And other one is I think Kyle. Yeah, they're both a top fifteen and top twenty of the leaderboards, maintaining point score of uh, eighteen thousand. I mean, no, twenty six thousand and eighteen thousand. Now, that's what I that know based on regarding the leaderboard. That is definitely very, very impressive. Our own representatives on the leaderboards of Greta. And one thing's for sure, that is actually not something easy to do. I mean, the grind is definitely a very long and difficult one. And so I really recommend all the players that are currently on leaderboards. Yes, indeed. But do they break their sleep, sleep schedules? Yes, of course. They play at Catalan. <laughs> Midnight, they do graveyard shift and playing games, grinding for those points. But nonetheless, never underestimate the players from Luan. Who knows what they might bring to this game? While we wait for them, getting ready. There's not a lobby yet. No, yeah, there's no, there's not a lobby yet. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Yep. But I want to ask you what your predictions are. Do you think this is going to be a close match? Is this going to be a, a one-sided match as it was a while ago? Or what are you expecting? Mm, 
seeing how players, I mean, uh, knowing uh, I don't know, knowing that I don't know players from Leluan and knowing players from Cebu, and we did have a great match scrim uh, the other day. I prefer to say that Cebu would take that glance, take that win, but now I'm betting my horses on Liluan Wasabi. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens inside the game itself. But unfortunately, we are having some difficulty with the room as uh, our players are also getting ready. But let's talk about the map that we're going into. Actually, yes. this is the first time that we're going to be seeing takeoff in this tournament. So what are some key aspects of takeoff that you think our players should be aware of and, you know, get ready for? Yo, actually, uh, the power positions in takeoff, the Aurora side, the, the red 2F and uh, the blue side, and as well as the scaffold are uh, three power points. You should push for it. You should contest because of the open point, because you can info your teammates and get uh, get kills from you no know, uh, enemies trying to go in from that point. The seeing those in the upper hand, they seem to get better angles as well as the anchors. But yeah, I think power point is a must for this map, Wasabi. Yep, definitely. Power positions are so important to be able to get the control of the hill, especially in the first couple of hills where it's very open and there's a lot of grenades and lethals and throwables that can go your way. You definitely need someone backing you up, playing that support role to be able to maintain the hold on the spawns. Yep, there's actually a good tip in playing the open point during the first entry of the hard point. You actually do not need to invest on the open point and invest on killing the other uh, other party and getting score streaks. Either score streaks, and if they get delayed, you can step on the hard point. Getting delayed and yeah. getting the spawn is a very must thing to do. But also, do not forget the anchor who takes on every task to do that because they play a crucial role in this map, in this big map. Definitely, they play such an important role. But again, if every it can't only be one player doing well. Everyone has to pull their weight to be able to you know make and maximize the team. Because again, Call of Duty Mobile is a team based game, and if they want to be able to, uh, if they want to be able to win the match, they have to be able to somehow work well as a team and somehow also. Uh, uh, integrate the things that they learn and changes that they need to make while playing the game. Yeah, playing scrims is no joke. They actually built so much chemistry as a team from the other tournaments. So hoping they would do the their best in this uh, takeoff map, do their chemistry, do their teamwork, the dedication to their game sense. Nonetheless, we're almost starting the game. Two players left from the side of Liluan. Yeah, they're waiting for two players now. So hopefully this would be a close fight that we need, Wasabi. Like, I want I want that close fight. Not just the other matches, so Lubong. <laughs> so hopefully, I mean, yeah, hopefully. you're right. Yeah, you're, you're right there. I mean, like, the last couple of matches have been so one-sided that we are definitely hoping for a little bit more of a thrill, a thrill, thrill game here between right, Liloan right. and Cebu City. But I guess we'll just have to find out. Our players are just about to get ready and we are about to go into the game. Getting yeah, ready is indeed good sense for them. Now waiting for the three players. We got uh, the lineup of Liluan, Wu, War, Sabito, XRs, and Mad Candley. Not knowing who their anchor is, but I know for sure for Cebu, we got RB8 AXG wait, Another technical difference for a moment, guys. Uh, can seem to see the yep. players, but we got Cebu Kanoi, who's a record, I mean, no, uh, leaderboard holder and now maintaining his top 15 place. Yep, and we also have Ao on the side of Cebu, as well as Kanoi, Chong, and Sama playing on the team of Cebu City. And once again, these players are just about, to, we are about to begin the game. So last a quick take before we start, are you going to stick with Liloan or are you going to switch to the side of Cebu City as after knowing the players? We can't pick on the same sides, you know, so yeah, you pick Cebu, 
but I'll go with Liloan. So it's okay, bro. I'll bet on you on this. Uh, how about uh, I think uh, Cebu would try a nuke on this one. That's that's for uh, my take on it, my opinion. But no, we, right. we would never underestimate uh, Liloan for what their strategy is for this game. Maybe they're underdogs, waiting for that win. Hopefully. Well, definitely. Hopefully, the underdogs are able to make their way through and get into the next round. But before we go into the game, once again, our sponsors of this tournament and the only reason why we are having this tournament is going to be Virginia Foods Incorporated, Bio Agronica, Mooning, Omega Multi Plant Vitamins, as well as Dos Amigos. And once again, guys, don't forget to support our, our sponsors because without them, we wouldn't have this tournament. Yep not forgetting CEA for doing this event very much. Cebu Esports Arena's first ever mobile tournament for Call of Duty Mobile waiting for it to be land. And if the final brackets are to be guessed now, we would be able to see these players come face to face. Yeah, I said it, there's a face to face coming off with the finals were to be guessed now. Now, hopefully these players are gonna start in a bit in this map of takeoff. A long range map, hoping to see some holder plays from these anchors. I think they're gonna need a double anchor right here, Wasabi. I mean, definitely possible, but I think it would be a more uh, more beneficial for them to play support roles and objective as well as Slayer. Although they need at least one anchor to be hold holding down points, the rest have also their specific roles. And, well, again, it's really just down to the composition of the team and how they're able to maximize each player's potential and role in this game. Yep. Sounds and playing for the point is a must for gaming as well as being good at gunfights. Let's see how they exchange uh, bullets right here straight through their heads, was happy. Wondering who's going to be the anchor for Luluan, though. Who's going to be the objective? Who's going to be the support? Who's going to be the Slayer? And with their OS, they should maintain that carefully with uh, careful parameters of using the unique uh, operator skills. Because one shot of that one would lead to something risky for the team. Very crucial. Hoping we see play yep. by play here. Mm hmm but you know one thing also is very important for this team is to be able to maximize the, the score streaks and operator skills that they're going to be able to develop over time and also you know the meta guns in the game right now you have to be able to use that to their advantage but right now we are actually going to go into the game going into takeoff and as our players load up we are also gonna be getting ready for the match to start are you ready for this mel yeah, I'm super ready and excited now. Seeing, seeing, uh, hearing you say about the meta guns, I'm hopefully sure they're using CBR at the moment. Like CBR and uh, Holger, or he's using RPD or either Kilo one for one. Yeah, hoping this gun strafe up far away during the passage of the enemy team. Yep, and right now you can see that the players are finally loading up. It looks like um one of the players of the side of uh I think this is Lilo An is actually having an issue loading up into the game. So we are yeah. going to be waiting for them to get in and hopefully they're able to load up. Hopefully we don't have to do a reroom. Um well, while we are waiting for the uh, while we are waiting for the players to load up, can you talk about the different aspects of each of the hills here in this map? Well, first one is the open hard point in which I said Ganina, you shouldn't invest on the open hard point. You should invest in getting the score straight, getting the spawn flip, controlling the area so much no one steps on it. And if they got delayed, that oh they're they're on a four v five right now as I talk. Maybe they'll quit in this Ooh. game. Well, I am. Um, to be fair, um, to be honest, I am not quite sure what exactly is gonna happen. But we are just gonna wait until Prod gives us a signal if we're gonna go for a reroom or we're gonna go continue the game. But from the looks of it, the oh, players God, are man. actually going in for it, and unfortunately, this does put the players of Ilo, Ilo, uh, Lilo An in a huge disadvantage here as they are down four to five. Pretty huge disadvantage for Lula and why are they letting play a 4v5? Maybe some problems with their players are currently at the point. Yes, G Lang Dao Sabi in abroad. Now having Ayo taking out that lower scaffold, holding down the area, the blue top side. 
controlling the spawn at the moment the passing of the players can be annihilated but players who is in the upper hand now sares tries to take the red aurora hoping to kill the blue side contesting Ooh. it gets taken down by chong beautiful strafe there guarding two there's two people guarding the hard point right now wasabi now this one is something that I don't see very often. The players of Cebu City have such a good hold on that first hill, despite how difficult it is, that they're already at 44 points in the start of the match. And now, as the second hill opens up, if they're able to hold it just like that, this might be a really, really quick match for them as they continue to slay and win all their gunfights. Cebu City here, their positioning is just good, is, is on point. They're winning their gunfights and they're doing everything right so far now the question is how is Lilo I'm gonna turn this around because they're struggling a lot here yep they're really struggling even for a 4v5 I think they're gonna get a lot to lot to score right now wasabi not wondering who's gonna take that spawn right there they're not contesting anyway for that point responding at seaside is a very good uh, not not good uh, disadvantage at them Yep, but right now, 27 seconds left on that second hill, and it looks like it's still gonna con go to the side of Cebu City. And look at this, Mel. Nothing has gone yet to the side Nine. of Liloan. And you can see that the 4v5 situation is really making them struggle. Oh. I mean, they are down a player. That means that they are definitely spreading themselves a little too thin as they try to deal with five opponents. Hopefully they get, they get their score to be one because that is zero right there is pretty crucial from them. They're not pushing or anything. They're not trying. I know based on their four v five move. I uh, know four v five strategies going through the generators. Who's we have we have here Hanoi going in trying trying to kill two people at once during the hard point opening up gets taken down eventually. Now two they're at a bad spot right now. If you take the Aurora spot, that's a good power position for them to stay put. Because you can see the one coming up from the health center. See that? Yeah, he gets taken down. Multiple kill delaying Ooh. that enemy so far. Look at the score point score difference. It's 100 mark now. Yep, finally a 100 point mark on the side of Cebu City and they continue to make the kill feed yellow. You can see Sama there getting 5 kill streaks already and oh, she continues to slay the opponent. Now, a very big predator missile going to the side of Cebu City, getting 2 players as well. That's gonna clear and open up the area for them to go in. 138, 39 points to their side and they just keep bringing it higher and higher as they continue to earn points here. Growth, score streak by score streak, and OS by OS, they are all taking down the enemy opponents of Liluan. Truly a disadvantage, as well as for a 4v5, having to maintain a hard point right there. They need to go on with their gunfights if they need to win this game. It would be a miracle if they win this game, Wasabi. Definitely going to be a miracle if somehow Liloan's gonna be able to turn the tides, but right now it's looking like it's in the favor of the side of Cebu City. 160 on their name, and I I am just at a loss for words here, Mel, because you can see that the players of Liloan, they haven't even gotten two digit kills just yet, and there you see a waste of an of an investment into an operator skill as he gets taken down and their place on Cebu City on the other hand. They're all about to, uh, they're all in the double digits area, some of them hitting 20 kills already. And despite that, they are still able to get so many points on their side. Indeed, but there's no more plenty of time they need, they need to work for, for a push right there. Now they're at almost close to a 200 point score mark as, the, as the, another hard point opens up. An open hard point, hoping they would not invest in that. Truly, because look at that score, Wasabi, that's unbelievable, hoping it would be a balanced game, but no, it's the same as the other games. What are they doing right now? Well, I'm not quite sure, but right now, 200 points on the side of Cebu City, and they continue to slay. This first hill was their first money hill. Let's see if they're going to be able to pull that off once again. Here, the players of Liloan. Still trying to make the push, trying to make the best of what they've got, but unfortunately, it looks like it's just not going to be enough. 20 more points needed, and it looks like Cebu City might just be able to end it on this hill. Yep, Cebu City is light up, and kills right there, protecting the hard point as a must, getting through the seaside. Kanoi taking out those players coming in from the seaside, going to the scaffold. And a CBR as an anchor, I thought they were using a holder. 
they're maintaining a good positioning right now, but if uh, Liluan does not make a push, change of gameplays right there now, Cebu will go up the upper bracket and Liluan will join the other team from the lower ones. You need to make this yep. play right. Yep, you're definitely right there, but it looks like Liloan just gets saved by the bell as the next hard point opens up. But it looks like Cebu City's gonna be the one taking that hill, and there Damn. you have it. They end at 250 to 6 points. I mean, that is such a huge lead to the side of Cebu City. And they just did amazing there. I definitely did not expect such a one-sided game. But I guess it was really because of that internet or connection issue that Lilo An had. And they weren't able to get their fifth player in. Yeah, either that, uh, Cebu was uh, taking up seriously that game. That was the best match for today's not-so-balanced matches. Because oh, yeah, after okay. taking those points, they got lu very Lubong so much. A 250 versus six point score difference no that's too unbelievable for a tournament like this wow definitely